We'll call this work session Monday, June 7th, in order. The invocation given by Ms. Tolliver and Pledge of Allegiance by Mr. Asher. I think about is, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Bless the citizens of Scottsboro, bless all the leaders. We ask that you take care of our city and continue doing what you know that's best for our city. I ask this in all of Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Number one tonight in the work session be discussed the bleep problem. Uh, Mr. Levin. Thank you, Mr. President. We, uh, we discussed this before. I don't know if you've got any questions or how you want to go about this, but this program right here um, can be done two different ways. We've been on 24 month interval because that's what they recommended. Um, the, the first package that you're looking at consists of 11 vehicles where, in, in reality, you're going to be touching 22 city vehicles by doing this program. Let some of these apartments get rid of their oldest ones and move them on down. Some of the folks that are on this list that don't have apartments. Um, you got some folks here at City Hall. Those vehicles. Uh, we'll be passed down to some departments that are in need. One of the street department that's on the list. Um, some of them will actually be sold and put back into the fund. Uh, if you do this and simply do the loan only, interest only loan for the duration of this, the sale of some of these vehicles will actually fund the program for two years. Um, the guaranteed buyback is 90%. They don't do 100%, and I, I understand, I get it. The letter says you're guaranteed 90, but he said if history proves itself, you know, it can be up to 125%. It be more. Uh, it just depends on the value that you, the investment that you put in. I know it's a little different than the city's approach to this stuff before. Uh, I, I think it's a very viable program that can be added to as you see fit, but um, getting started with this amount of vehicles, you know, just uh, again, I'll answer any questions you got, in my opinion, which doesn't really count, this is a great start to try to get rid of some older equipment each one of these apartments have now. My first question would be, of course, you know, be paying the interest on me. Yes, sir. What would the yearly I don't have that in front of me. I think it's on your sheet. I think it's eleven thousand okay. uh, dollars a year. Um, the rate that I was quoted is not in concrete. It could be a little lower, but I think it's going to be close. Um, the sale of the two vehicles that I've put on your sheet actually should fund the program for the duration of 24 months. It should pay the interest on both years. The marriage vehicle being one of them, I think it's going to run enough money more than likely to, to fund the program in its entirety. Anyone else have any questions, Mr. Lesnar, on this? Yeah, what do you, uh, can we not do a buyback program uh, buying a vehicle as needed? Like if, we, if somebody in a, a department needs a vehicle, we buy one, and then with the understanding we're going to turn around and sell it two years. Instead of buying whole fleet, you can, yes, sir. Sure can. Mayor, I think you did some. Yeah, I have a question too. Now, this is obviously for uh, apartment vehicles. Can we plug in the other fleet vehicles like Wayne's equipment, his knuckle booms, garbage, all of our fleet? Can we not? Can we plug that into the same 
program and process because those are the ones that are really killing us on that. Um, yes, yeah, sir. Now, I, I can't speak for his knuckle bones. You know, there's some issues with the type of those trucks. They're, they're so, the market's flooded with the knuckle bones. Our roll offs are already in this system. Um, they're going to roll out every two years. We have a guaranteed buyback on those. I will look into the knuckle bones and see. Um, well, it's not just knuckle bones, it's all dump trucks, the old dump trucks, fleet management. Most certainly. You better believe it. Dump trucks are, are very high priority for them. Um, so, yes, sir, all of those can be added to the program. The knuckle booms, the only problem with those is when you have disasters and things like that, you, you know, these contractors go in, and everybody and the brothers got one when it's over and flood the market with it. That's why we have a problem getting a buyback on those. Um, the roll offs now, they're on the program. Um, the and the garbage trucks. trucks are. The front container, we've got one new front container that's on the program. The three roll offs are on the program, and that rear loader is on the program. So we have four. Uh, three, four, we have five that's on that program now. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else have a question? I'd like to have more time to back on that. I really want to blow it tonight. I have, I have some issues buying this many new vehicles at one time when uh, some of them I don't think need replacing yet. If you got a vehicle that's wore out, yeah, buy another one. And then two years sell it, buy another one. Well, I also had an issue with selling <coughs> Of course. Sure. I, we, we discussed that before. Yes. Uh, How about we put this on the next work session, which will be the 21st? And I can make some corrections on some of your. Things and resubmit it. Well, maybe we'll make a couple different options and go from there. Thank you. Number two, discuss the four way stop in the intersection of Andrew Street and Laurel Street. Uh, I don't know if Ron or Mr. Dalton, you, you'd like to go over that some? Yep. I just received some complaints and I had the uh, police chief do some. Uh, <coughs> Accident stats for that intersection, Andrews and Laurel, uh, East Laurel. And that's the only intersection on that whole side of Laurel Street that doesn't have a four way stop. And it kind of tends to confuse people. And, uh, the ones coming from Andrews may think that the one on Laurel is supposed to stop and they don't have to right now. And, Crash. The numbers were uh, pretty significant. I think 33, 35, 35, 35 wrecks since 2011. Oh. Four just this year. Of course, working where I do, I see them all. Yeah. Back. And they tend to be, uh, I'm sorry, they tend to be T bone type wrecks yes. with uh, injuries. The only question I'd have with it is, I, I don't know how the process is once you put up new stop signs, how long to notify people that typically we give them a 30 day notice once it's up, that we don't, we don't issue citations yeah. or anything, we just get it out in public, publicize it, and then after 30 days, then we'll start issuing citations if need be. Because while we get it right now, Right now, basically, the person on Andrews that pulls out in front of somebody is going to be their fault. Yeah, it's the failure. So yeah. when we put the four way up, that person who runs law, and it turns around, it's their fault. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to uh, change the amount of wrecks. It's going to change whose fault it is. I think it'll slow down traffic approaching the square, which I think mm -hmm. might be important. Okay. I was pulling out Andrews today, and somebody that was heading for the square of all saw. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there are people that stop there frequently. One of the things that's interesting, over the last 35, 40 years, uh, it has gone back and forth. We've had stop signs on Laurel in the past, there have been stop signs on Andrews in the past, and that ends up just causing confusion over a period, over a generation. Right. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's been a problem. There's never been a four way stop there. Because there's a swap. Who had to stop? Right. Twice or three times. Okay. 
So we did a full rest for the first time too, as far as I know. Okay. And I don't I don't think it would affect any traffic coming off the square. I don't think it would create a, a backup or backup in my opinion. I think things are clear <coughs> pretty quick. Okay. Anyone else have any questions on it? Well we'll move that to tonight's meeting. Number three, discuss the next side agreement. Um, Mayor, are you going to try to tackle it or you want me to? Go ahead. I haven't got anything else to add. I, think. I really don't have anything else to add either. I, I haven't talked to Mr. Branch or anyone else on this situation. Um, I think we're still sitting in the same boat we were as far as uh, we have a contract here that he would like us to sign now after the fact and it, basically this contract will begin to May of this year through October if we so and we're inclined to do it. So anyone you know, have had a chance to look at it and want to ask any questions as far as that goes? I'd like to take a look to the next work session. I'd like to study over it and maybe get some of the facts times gone by that. Is Same with me. I I need some more information. And and as far as more information, I would say reach out to former council members because they may have some insight on this that we we don't. So so we'll table this until the next work session. All right, number four, discuss the tanker for the solid waste department. Mr. Levin. Thank you again. Um, there's nothing new that we have not already discussed. Uh, this tanker, the, the closest one that we have found, um, I sent the information over. I don't know if you have it in front or not. But it looks like we're going to be able to probably purchase one for $36,000. Um, it, it's, a, it's a very important piece to learn to. So I'll be glad to answer any questions. How much did you say it was? 36,000. Anyone have any questions about the tanker? I believe we've all been over it and discussed what it's for and all that. If not, then we'll move that to tonight's meeting. So while you're there, we'll go ahead to number five, discuss the TRACO for the Solid Waste Department. Um, the TRACO is something that we've discussed two previous meetings also. This will this will be going to the existing sale um, that, that we have just finished. won't be on the new one. Uh, it needs to stay out of the garbage. Uh, we will repair these uh, blades that we have. Um, we've been strolling garbage on the site. It's very difficult to move one from the garbage around the perimeters of this place and struggle it. That stuff, we, we kind of get tagged every time. We had an inspection Friday, of course that's on my inspection. And I knew it would be, but there's nothing I can do about it. Um, the one that's in the garbage needs to stay there. I don't need to move around the site to fix these problems that we have. So that's what that, that one's for. And this also is something we've been over a couple times also. So. You want to have any questions about the track over? What was the price on it? Um, I called three places, and the ones we're trying to find the used one. It's pretty difficult to do, but it's eighty-six five. Eighty-six five. Yes, sir. Anyone else have any questions? If not, we'll move that on to announce council meeting also. Number six, discuss the resolution to remove or replace no parking signs on College Avenue. Mayor? Um, I had a call from Dr. Reyes a couple of weeks ago after they met and decided that they were not going to build the parking spots at Page Administration Building. And in order to allow them parking, um, 
I recommend that we remove the no parking signs along College Avenue and place uh, and get just a little to look and see where we need to place a no parking here at the corner sign before Scott Street to allow parking on that side of Scott Street. Any more questions on this? So you are still going to have no parking towards the corner? Right at the corner, yeah. Um, I'm just a little to look at and see the distance, the proper distance from Scott Street uh, back up to college. Yeah. I think it's 25 feet. We'll move that to tonight's meeting also. Number seven, discuss the city park buoys. Mr. Mayor? Um, I don't know whether everybody's aware or not, but this past year, the county park removed their swimming dock at the county park. And as a result, a lot of the folks that were swimming at the county park are now swimming at the city park. And the one swimming dock that we have down there is not protected with no boats or with swimming buoys. And we've had several complaints about boats being in the dock where they're swimming with children and that kind of thing. So um, I asked Ms. Bradford to contact uh, Marine Police, which she did, and got information for us, as well as from Goose Pond, to provide swimming buoys around that dock uh, that will actually they're actually line buoys that will keep boats out with no boats allowed uh, with the corners. Um, the pricing she got uh, was um, a little over to about $2,100. Um, and the recommendation would be to install the buoys around the swimming dock at a cost not to exceed $3,000. Uh, we can add additional no weight buoys uh, if we if we think we need to do that at extra cost about two hundred sixty dollars a piece. But they've also had complaints about weight zones from the boat launch, so something we might want to consider. But uh, the recommendation would be to put in buoys one hundred fifty feet by one hundred thirty two feet around that dock uh, at a cost not to exceed three thousand dollars. Is Bradford anything else? Anyone have any questions on that? If not, we'll move that to tonight's meeting. Number eight, discuss the recommendation from the planning commission for rezoning. Mr. Lyon. Okay, um, we're requesting P1 um, zoning. The property is currently zoned commercial. Um, rezoning it would allow for uh, 108 apartments along with 92 um, houses on the property, which uh, obviously is not currently zoned for, and we would still, um, uh, y'all can't see this, I don't think, but it also would leave commercial on the highway front of Highway 72. It would be approximately 20,000 square foot of commercial development still allowed. Um, so I know some of y'all aren't familiar with P1. Josh Little is, though, so he, he, can, uh, he can chime in. Uh, I think you got to be 25% developed on the residential before you can go to commercial. And I think it has to be 60% uh, residential. Qualify for P1. I know I wasn't aware of P1, but it was it's definitely needed in this case. And uh, it would be a great asset. I'm sorry. I don't know if y'all got the chance to look at all of this, but I, I can show you some color pictures here. And, and I think you can get down to do it. We're looking at that's right here, the yes, cluster housing. Look. Yes, sir, which is option two on the master plan, uh, but it would be cluster homes. And this is a recommendation coming from the Planning Commission 
which I was there that night with no objection at all. No one showed up to object, of course, because housing is very much needed in the city. And so, right. Mr. Kimmer, can you go over the process? Because this is, we will be voting, we would be voting just to move with the public here. Yes, to move this forward. Uh, this will have to be advertised. Additional public hearings will have to be held. Uh, and uh, they'll have to be done since you're not in the newspaper. Uh, but uh, there is a process. Uh, I think y'all have been through the same process very recently on a couple of other issues. And we followed exactly the same process. So the motion tonight would be to proceed forward with this. It would be placed on the council meeting for a vote. Anyone have any questions about this? If not, we'll put that on tonight's meeting to vote on, to move forward, to see forward. Thank you. Thank you. All right, number nine, discussed renovations at Carver Park. Uh, Mayor, are you over this? Sure. Um, a couple weeks ago, we were riding through Carver Park and saw where there was a light pole had fallen and it down across the fence. And uh, Ms. Bradford contacted the power board, got the light replaced, and the fence company is the fence been repaired. Okay, it hasn't been repaired. Uh, it hasn't been. I it checked it. this morning. It has not been. Okay, I'm sorry. But uh, it's, it's, she's already given the video. Okay, so it is ordered and you know, in the process. Um, in addition to that, just talking to there's what are they having up there later this They're having an event on Father's Day, and um, I talked to the president about it. That the things about a fair, we're not for sure if some of the things work, like flood outlets, water, the commodes flush, they don't know. So I think we need to go through and do a uh, safety check. Um, and um, it needs to be cleaned up. Well, the other point was the court, the basketball court. I mean, yes. Bradford got a price earlier today. I think she gave everybody a copy. This is to have it sealed and striped. Right. Um, okay. So uh, okay. cost of that total is $7,200. So. And it would be done before the event? Before the event, before yeah. Father's Day. Right. Okay. And I even suggested um, that uh, the community come and clean up, help, and I, I told them I'm willing to help them with that, and I think we can move forward, being ready on the 21st. I don't know if uh, the mayor talked to you about the um, basketball nets. We need. I got those on. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So the amount. The 7,200 is just the basketball courts. What, what about the repairing the fence? The PLA is already in the Okay, so we don't need to bring this to take care of that. And the light pole has already been replaced. So this would be $7,200 for sealing and striping the basketball court. Okay. Anyone else have any questions on the room? <coughs> Hearing none, we'll move that to the last meeting also. Number 10, discuss seasonal employees for the recreation department. This is actually, Katie's going to speak on this. Uh, Ms. Kirkland. So I know you know, I don't think you need to know this, but I need help in the downtown with the maintenance. We need someone to pick up the trash cans before trade day. This afternoon, after this meeting, I'm going to have to move the scissor lift by myself. And, you know, <laughs> the way that is. So I just need someone to help, and this would include watering plants. We have an irrigation system, but in the summer we need extra help doing that. And I don't want to have to tie up the street department every time I need help doing something like that. They shouldn't be doing that. And trade day, the garbage cans shouldn't be full, and then they get more full whenever we have crowd down there. So I just need help, and this would also include helping out with any scaffolding we need, the tables and chairs for trade day, and helping me decorate at Christmas. I was only going to 12 foot tree by myself this time. So that's, I don't know. I think it'd be best to go back a little further and do a background on the job. Uh, 
Uh, Mayor, can you explain that uh, this job actually used to be through the rent department? It, was, it did, and the individual retired uh -huh. and was actually not replaced. Some of his duties were actually the maintenance, the uh, janitorial were given to Karen, which has actually got her overloaded too. So this was a position that was already in place but was never filled uh, after, I guess, last summer. Mm -hmm. I think the question is, is uh, if we were to add this employee or fill this spot, who, of course, where would be paid from, and who they would be, which department they would go to, because they really wouldn't be part of the direct department. <laughs> we could use them in both places. We could use them in the at the rec department as well as helping Katie uh, doing the watering and that kind of thing. It could be used. Right. Is that position still in the budget? Karen actually uses that salary. She cleans the retcon city hall when they're in the street department. She goes to the cemetery and clean. So she uses that salary. She uses that salary and does a lot more than yes. the other job did. Yes. Yes. So but the outside right. job is not. Is her, not. her job was expanded. Yes. Uh, it was uh, spread out across the city. That job was dedicated at one time to the recreation department. So that's, that's what happened to it. Yes, yes and that's, that's what we're looking at as a part. We put seasonal employee, but we're looking really at part time employees. Yeah. Um, but I need to know hours and things like that. American U. I don't want to push this off too much longer because I, I don't know about any of y'all, but I've got plenty of calls about all those beautiful flowers dying because nobody's watered them. Mm -hmm. And so... I've got a complaint about the garbage. Yeah. Well, and then, Mr. Level, I guess we just, the inside garbage cans for the counties, the outside of the cities, it's, it's kind of confusing over there. And so yeah. you'll get calls about garbage, but it may not be <laughs> Outside cans, we set from the end each time she has one. The inside cans are the daily use, which are permanent structures. And of course, the mayor just said there was an employee that used to go in there and actually take the bags out every day. And when he done away with the, when he retired, nobody picked that up. Um, it's, it's just pretty yeah. cut and dry. Yeah. You know, about 10 years ago, coming to this conference, there was an employee here. He worked every night up on the square. I don't know. I think he's full time. I don't know if he had other duties, too. Mary, do you think you need to research this more, or do you think this is a recommendation how you would handle this employee? I would recommend it be handled through the rec department. There, um, we just need, I guess, we need to come up with a job description so that we're covered in both places. And then I'll move, Mr. Wheeler. So if we did a part-time employee, say 20 hours a week, um, what kind of money we got? Appreciate it. All right, number 11. 
discuss the fence, King Walk, Caldwell Park, Mary. Um, the fence that was around King Caldwell Park was taken down, I guess, a year or so ago, maybe two years ago. Uh, it's not been replaced. We needed to replace it. We had several requests to replace it. Um, Mr. Moore got me prices for a split rail cedar fence to replace what was there around the entire park, which is what we had before, 1,713 feet. I also talked to Mr. Moore and he said the street department could install it. Um, split rail cedar is uh, $7,545.23. For the full 1,700 uh, Broad Street and Chapel Street and Guard Drive. Um, my recommendation, and I understand uh, the Three Arts Club has offered to help with this up to. They wanted the city council to pay up to four thousand dollars. Four thousand, so that would leave uh, thirty-five hundred dollars for the Three Arts Club that they could agree to cover. So my recommendation would be to proceed with this so we can get it ordered and get it installed by mid-August. Well, I, I, I'd like to go ahead and discuss that part of it. Um, as far as that goes, this is the city park, uh, city-owned park, and I appreciate the Three Arts Club and their suggestions, but I, I really believe the city should pay for if we decide to put a fence back up there. I think so, too. That's right. So I mean, an offer that they made, so. Yes, yes. I, I definitely appreciate that. But, and I say that because I was sitting here when the other fence went down, and we just didn't have the money at the time to put another one back up. But the plan all along was to put one back up. And so, anyone else have any questions or anything on that? If not, we'll move that to the night's meeting also. That will conclude our work session. Give us about five minutes and we'll come back with the council.